Dungeon Runners Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dungeon Runners Podcast. I am Mr. Creepypasta. And I am General Drown. And I am General Drown, who introduced himself. <laughs> For be fucking capable on your own, I guess. Yeah, it's as if I can talk for myself. God. So it's just us two. I think last week. See, I wasn't here last week, so you'll have to fill me in. But I think everybody that was a part of last week's was sick, right? You guys basically did a sick podcast. Yeah, last week it was me and Matt. Matt me and Matt were both sick. Uh, we, like, I was getting better. Matt was still kind of on the edge. And Matt fell over that edge. Down a cliff. And now he's oh. sick. <laughs> and now he's sick, and that's why he's not here. I was going to say, he's been, yeah, he's, he's gotten even more sick. And basically everybody else is sick. So it's, it's once again just a two-person cast, as opposed to being a three like we've done before. It's On the bright to... side, I'm here. I'm still going. I'm the only person who hasn't missed so far. I... Have you been at every single podcast? Yeah, oh, yeah, I sure have. No, you haven't. There's no way. I'm gonna go look. No, because like there was there was a day I was supposed to miss. It was like the first day I was getting sick. Um, but what en ended up happening was I showed up anyways because we didn't have a third, and I was like, ah, oh, fine. Uh huh. Okay. So that means uh, we've got to sabotage you, and you won't be in next week. <laughs> See, the problem is, I have a feeling if I wasn't available next week, it, there would be no one. Why? I would be available next week. I thought you said you were gonna be you you were gonna be dead in the house or something like that. No, I mean that was that was last week. I was I was dead in the house. Like for those of you who don't know, in this last week, uh, we closed on that house that I was trying that I I, I bought I did buy, um, and the uh, I, I wasn't here last week because we were I was actually up in in Dallas putting like the closing finishing stuff on it. So that that's where I was. That's why I wasn't here last week. I wasn't actually sick, but. Um, no, I will be up there, and I will actually have internet, and I will be in this podcast. You are gone. I'm kicking you out. Fine. I didn't want to be here anyway. I could have been playing 14 right now, man. I could be leveling my paladin without you. Just like I leveled my samurai without you. Wow! Oh. You stabbed me in the back at every turn. <laughs> look, it's not my fault you decided to have a life. I Look, okay. Mr. Mary, Responsible. Trying has, to a house. Trying to have wanna... a house with a wife and kids and a cat. We want kids. I have a cat. No, I'm gonna get into that. When we, when, I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. But first, I got. I'm gonna. We're gonna let, I got a question for you. Okay. What up, home slice? Okay. So this week, this week, I have a. I have a different question. Um, that I think you'll probably you'll you'll probably like because like it gets, lets us talk about us as well as it's a it's a nice happy question versus shit we're gonna get pissed at each other about like fucking each other's clones. So what do you mean? No one got pissed about that. You guys are just objectively wrong. <laughs> wow. I was not. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> We're not going. <laughs> uh, the um, if you had to re if you um, I said we're given the opportunity, not have to. No, no, I guess have to. You have to. You have to relive it. Okay, you have to relive one year out of your life. What year would it be? Oh God, no! Come on, this right now is saying like what was the essentially what was the happiest year of your life? Fuck, I don't know. A year, an entire year. A year. An entire wow. year. So, I mean, like, you could be like, yeah, I had my first kiss when I was 14, but I also developed acne. Oh, I don't know. An entire year is really rough. Like, because, like, there's a constant, like, uh, everything sucks period, you know? Well, I mean, like, the, the, that's every year. There's ups and downs, of course, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's like, I can't, like, te like, for sure tell you what's a good year that was mostly good. Uh... Okay. Mm. Okay. How about this? How about this? Instead of one year, let's say like um, one month. What what one month would you want to relive? Oh, uh, the month that the Majora's Mask 3DS came out. Really? Yeah. That was just like you spent a whole month playing that game. <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, so like, what ended up happening is that game came out. Uh, I think that was relatively close to when you guys sent me the Majora's Mask mask. So it was like I had oh. that mask, had the game. I had the 3DS theme, I had the statue from Barnabas, like, fucking, everything was just so fucking sweet at that time. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was oh, like, I, I could see why that's a big thing. I mean, like, yeah. not, to, not to mention also, it's one of those things where, like, you have, like, all of your friends that are involved in everything like that, which makes it really nice, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, like, it's, it's Barnabas got it, Blue got it, neither of them finished it, but we still talked about it. I still was able to be like, oh, dude, Majora's Mask's 3DS changes are sick. 
And be like, because yeah. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've never finished Majora's Mask either because it seemed like the hardest fucking game. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say for some reason. I don't. I, I, it's a. Uh, it's a lot more lin. Mm, no, because like I guess technically in like technical terms, linear means like it's more straightforward. But I guess not because you could do a lot of different things in that one. But like I guess it's the more interesting one because it's like it has. To, like honestly, we. I'm gonna play. Do you have a fucking spinner? No. I might have a fidget spinner, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we are going to play Majora's Mask some, at some point. I just don't know with who, because like literally no one else in this podcast has fucking played it other than me. Yeah, no. I, I've played like a small bit I needed for like one of my videos, but I, I've i never actually played Majora's Mask. <laughs> yeah, so like I'm going there. I am definitely going to play it with someone. Um, and what's going to happen is it's going to be me fucking gushing over it for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Well, like okay i can tell you right now why out of any legend of zelda game that i've had been most apprehensive to play that one it why? seems like constant um like just constant pressure that's not, not the word i'm thinking of like like constant stress uh, knowing that i've only got so much time well yeah but like there's a lot of things that you have to accomplish within that timeline you know it's like you know yeah. the first so you you kind of know the first day you kind of talked about it, um or you kind of played it it's the first day is you are dealing with being a deco scrub, deco scrub and trying to figure out how to become back to normal. And it's you living your life in that town because you can't leave because everybody thinks you're a child, a little baby deco scrub because you're so tiny. Um, so you're like, you literally, the first day is I'm going to be running around, figuring out what to do with my time, passing time because I can't, I don't know how to pass time otherwise. Like there is a way to pass time really fast, even without the ocarina. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna be like I want to go learn about the town. I'm gonna go talk to everybody. I'm gonna be able to go see what everybody does every day. And it's like there's a it's just like you can do a bunch of things. You can play like these mini games in the uh, deck of uh, playground. You can get a couple of masks. You can find out there's a lottery shop. You can look around for rupees. You can there's a lot of stuff. It's just like literally like you will have a bunch of stuff just to do constantly. And it's like there's not a whole lot of pressure. The only pressure that you have is when you get to your dungeon. And the when you mm -hmm. get to your dungeon, even then there is a uh, a shortcut thing you get relatively soon. It's like right before the dungeon starts, and it's this, called the Song of Soaring. And you'll always have that. Like you know how you you lose you lose items and rupees and the such when you reset time. You will yeah. always keep your teleports. You always keep that that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So it's just like you'll ha you'll you get a, a express way to be like, all right. I lost all my time, but I can go just go straight back there. See, like, my thing is just, like, I, the, the fact that I know that I'm constantly on a timer is what gives me, like, the, the continuous anxiety of, like, oh, God, I'm going to run out of time. Like, even I just I just get started, and it's like, I don't have enough time. I'm going to start again. But, like, <laughs> that's that's a really fucking awesome thing about it, too. It's like, in Ocarina of Time, it's like, yeah, you could just stand around and be, like, night. Yeah, you have all the like, time. Night, yeah. Like, in, um, in Ocarina of Time, like, you don't even... Time doesn't even pass when you're in towns. It only passes out w passes when you're in Hyrule Field, and it passes like mm -hmm. fucking fast. Too. It's like, damn. Yeah, and I just, noticed that. Like literally walking from the uh, what is it, Kokiri Forest to uh, to Hyrule, it takes you at least a day. Yeah, and it's just like sidestepping just doesn't do the, do the trick like you see, you know. <laughs> hop, hop, well, hop, like, hop, okay. hop, hop, hop. My my thing. Okay, so I just finished Outlast two uh -huh. uh, on Friday. And I was thinking, like, you know, whenever I'm just playing, like, horror games, especially one that's actually decent at doing horror, i constantly fucking nervous. Because I'm not <laughs> sure, is this a section where I'm supposed to be doing a puzzle? Is this a section where something's going to chase me? I don't know. Uh, and I'm constantly nervous. But it's it, it's more so with, um, with Majora's Mask. Because I always know that there's something consistently there. In, um, in Outlast, I don't know. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes I'm supposed to just figure out this puzzle, put, you know, object A into slot B. But um, with with Majora's Mask, I always know that, like, there is one enemy that's, con that's consistently following me, and that is time. See, that's one of the beautiful things about it, like, though. Well, that's, like, a, a, it's called theming. You're running out of time. You're, you're constantly reminded your time is limited you have a clock at the bottom that's ticking down you can see it going down and then when the day ends it says uh, uh night of the first day or dawn of the uh, second day 48 Stress. hours remain it wants you to re it wants you to re remember look look up there's a moon going to kill everyone <laughs> 
consistent stress. And it's then, a loaded gun to your head the entire game. Yes. And the person who has is holding it is just slowly pulling the trigger. Yep. And he's it's and like the thing that's the crazy thing too is like you can go to the observatory and you'll see him. He, the Skull Kid, the main uh, an antagonist, this uh, standing atop there, mocking you and making fun of you and be like, "Well, my moon's up there, I'm running out of time." Wait, is it actually the Skull? Like, probably spoilers here. So the Skull Kid actually is the main antagonist. Well, no. I mean, yes, but no. I mean, okay. do you really want me to spoil it? No. Oh, okay. So like, I don't. But I'm like, I'm curious. Okay, don't get me wrong. Don't don't think that I'm uninterested in the game. I'm interested in the game. I'm just, you know, also consistent stress. <laughs> See, I think that's great because like you do have um, you have options to slow down time because you, you, it doesn't tell you like directly. You have to be able to be like, I'm gonna talk to NPCs. I want to know, <laughs> I want to know stuff about the world. And you want to do that even after you get become a human and shit, because like they treat you differently. Everybody treats you differently. You're, like you're a different person when you have a ma when you have one of the masks on. Hmm. Like no one's able okay. to see that. And um. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Like, so when it, when you're wearing a mask, it's actually like a magical thing. Like you actually transform. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. So like, uh, it's a little bit of spoilers, but um, I don't know if you're gonna be the, like the guy I'm playing George Mask with. It might be mad. Well, no, no, I gotta be. I solidified it. That's it. We're <laughs> uh, playing but, it together, Jay. Uh, fucking the so the masks are technic in the technical sense. In the actual sense, the spirit of someone who's died. Like, you're transforming into someone who's already passed. Oh, I see. So you find that out in the second area. The second area is the... Well, I mean, you can... If you know how to speedrun, you can go to straight to the third area. But the second area, you go to the, the Goron place. And then you. what happens is that you find out that it's completely frozen over because of, a, because of the Skull Kid. He made it internal winter. So... You you find out like there is a kid missing his uh kid missing his grandfather or, or or father or something like that and he's just like oh nobody knows how to get keep the keep the kid from crying the, apparently his father used to sing him a lullaby and his grandfather used to sing it too and you find you find the grandfather like in the frozen lake completely and utterly frozen you can you can melt them but you have to go up top to find a spring and then you go to find the spring you find the the Goron baby's father's grave. And you push it to be able to release the spring water, and then um, you've well mm. beforehand the ghost actually the ghost of the father of the baby Goron leads you there, and he's like, well, I can't take care of my child anymore. I let all my people down. I and I am dead, and I can't do anything about it. So you have to literally heal his soul to be like, no, oh, dude, you were a great champion. Everybody loves you, and fucking your spirit lives on forever. And then he becomes a mask that you can transform into. So him. you give him a pep talk. Is what you're saying? Yeah, like you don't you don't heal his soul. You give him a pep talk. <laughs> kind of. It's through uh, the song of healing, which you get like after you get the deck mask. No, oh, okay. So that was magic. There. I, I assumed it was. I forget. Link is a silent protagonist. Yeah. But uh, it, it's it's changed for me already since uh, Breath of the Wild. Oh but, yeah. Like yeah, I forget that he's a silent pro protagonist. But well, no, okay. I feel yeah. you. It's it's just like. There's so much to that game, and we just love to be able to talk about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanna, I wanna experience it one day. It's maybe. It's it's weird though. It's <laughs> maybe it's weird though because it's like definitely not um anything like Breath of the Wild. Because Breath of the Wild is just like it's a Zelda game, but it's barely a Zelda game. What? Is yeah, this? yeah, I feel you. Oh, that was the thing that got me when you said that it's like Dark Souls. That's what I was like. Well, now I'm in. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It's just like you have weapons that you can change and take out and change and you can parry and you, you have to know how to fight. But the durability of them. Mm, yeah, the durability That's is the... garbage. <laughs> but like, yeah, there's bows, arrows, different fighting styles and all that shit. Mm -hmm. No, it, I actually really enjoyed Breath of the Wild and I've, I've not been a big fan of Zelda games uh, like at all. That was I was a really big fan of Breath of the Wild. Uh, did, if, my, the, if I could relive one month of my life, Jen, it would be uh, last November. I got married, like, cause that whole month was incredible. We had a full week where we had nothing but parties in this house. Oh shit! Everybody was came, who came down, like people from all over the world. Like Nico from Germany showed up, and um, Sarah and Autumn from Arizona were there, and um, Daphne showed up from from Turkey, and everybody was over at the house. Like you know, musicians and artists and models, and everybody was around. We were all drinking, having fun. One day was a barbecue party. The next day was a giant pizza party. I showed awesome. you the picture of those pizzas, man. Yeah, damn. Uh, I want the, I want I want to be eating on that pizza, man. 
if you're if you're ever down in Texas, we'll we'll go pick up one of these Big Lou's pizzas. Because those pizzas are gigantic. We had a we had three 37 inch pizzas, and we had to ha pull out an extra table to make enough room to carry all to like fit all of them. Dude, oh god, I would love this giant pizza. Yeah, San Antonio has some like this is the two reasons why I'm going to miss moving away from San Antonio. One is Big Lou's Pizza, the giant pizzas. I'm moving over to a city that doesn't have them. And then um, the other one, there's a place over here that sells giant cinnamon rolls, like a literally what? a cinnamon roll the size of an infant. What? what? Why are you moving? <laughs> okay, where I'm moving to, they have everything else but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have all the other things. Yes. <laughs> Good things about being in San Antonio is that they have giant pizzas and they have giant cinnamon rolls. However, anything else but that is in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, there, we were over there because um, we had time to kill when we were shopping around for houses and stuff. We put in the offer on the house and we went over to um, this place called, I think you guys have one. It's around one. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have one at the, the mall. Yeah, it's a pretty big chain, but like I've never been to one before because we don't have them in San Antonio. So I went to uh, the one that they had over there and oh my God, it was fucking awesome. They Dude, had yeah. all these Japanese arcade cabs and everything. I was playing that that Final Fantasy uh, rhythm game and everything like that and playing the songs out of like Final Fantasy 14. It was so cool. Dude, yeah. I, you were showing us screenshots and telling us about it. I was like, fuck, that's awesome. I don't know if they have that in our, our brown one. I haven't been in a while. You gotta go. Dude. You get some get some hot wings. You know, go, go with Barney. Get some hot wings. Um, go play a little bit of bowling. Uh, dude, Wait, bo bo bowling, karaoke. Uh, yeah. You got one yeah. of those full-on anime karaoke rooms, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, a private room where you can karaoke. Wow. We didn't have to go there. You took it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's no, all the time I mean, to like, karaoke. Sorry, what? Just sing sing uh, City Escape from Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. You don't no. know City Escape? No. Yeah, <laughs> no everyone knows it. I don't know what Sonic songs are. Rolling around at the speed of sound. You know that one? The, the one from Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure? Sonic had an adventure? I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 together. All right, but you, you actually have to play with Jarl's Mask. Oh, wait. I thought I was just going to watch you play it. <laughs> I mean, if I don't have to play Sonic. I mean, you do. I'll, I'll that's, generally watch. Your, that's generally what you're going to be doing anytime we do anything. What do you you're mean? I, <laughs> I have to play it? Yeah, no, for everybody who's currently listening to this podcast, know that you can listen in on Tuesday evenings at twitch.tv slash dungeon runners. And uh, if you do listen in on twitch.tv slash dungeon runners, you'll be able to see us also playing a video game while listening to we uh, record the podcast. And when I say we, I mean Jen. Jen yeah, appa <laughs> apparently, apparently it's only ever me. Like okay. I, we've, This is episode eight, okay? I think out of the eight episodes that we've done, you have played six of them. <laughs> What's fucking... Because no one wants to do it. And now it's always last minute. It's like, all right, let's no, do the podcast. Who's going to play the game? mindlessly play a game. Like, they, holding a conversation while playing a game is hard. I managed to do that, like, while playing um, Sonic the Hedgehog, and I died on the first boss. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am not... It wasn't even the hard boss. It was the one that just had a swinging pendulum. <laughs> oh right, that's right. That's what the first boss in Sonic is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but fun. trying to talk and play at the same time is fucking hard. I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I do it constantly, and I'm doing it right now, and I'm doing the challenges in Shovel Knight, and I've passed a couple of them already. Are you? Jesus Christ. So yeah, no. Um, that's. That's a time for me. It'd be my marriage. That's good. Okay. <laughs> How, how's been your How's been your week? Have you been uh, You been you um, been working hard? Hardly working. I heard you got like new headphones. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, um, fucking in at work, I got um, I went and bought those wireless earbuds that I was talking about. Well, it's one wireless earbud. It's basically like a Bluetooth headset kind of thing, but like. Fucking... So actually, wait, you say one? Is it only going to one in a year? Or... Yeah, one, it's only one year. Yeah. It, okay. it was pretty expensive, but it's not expensive as expensive as what the the, the two ones would be. Because, like, oh, the yeah. two ones would are like $60 or $70 and shit like that. And it's just like, I got one for like $32, I think it was. And it's just like, if that's I. Actually, that's not bad at all. Yeah, fucking. Not only does it work, it lasts, it lasts 
pretty much the entire my entire work shift, like the entire like eight ish hours. Um, yeah. no, ten hours. Sorry, sorry. I didn't work ten hours. Eight you hours. Work a ten hour shift. Yeah, dude. Um, Jesus. I I wake up at two thirty, leave, and be there by four four thirty, and then I get out at three o'clock. Wow. Oh. Jeez, man. No so, wonder you always go to bed early. I'm always <laughs> just like, man, he's a wuss. He doesn't stay up till anything. You only need two hours of sleep for work. <laughs> Ten hour shifts? Jesus. Dude, I gotta make that money, though. No, I feel you. No, when I was, um, when I worked at at and I would consistently, uh, take on overtime. Uh, and, until I started really picking up on YouTube stuff. I used to do, um, overtime, cons- like, all the damn time. I would do, like, 60 hour weeks because I just... I want to make that. I want to make that money, you know. Yeah. When I put money aside, I want to become a successful person, and then I stop that. <laughs> like fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, I switched over. Like I, I said, fuck this to AT and T because AT and T said fuck this to me. They gave me this. Um, I don't. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've told you this story countless times, but uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the the, the uh, podcast before. But uh, when I worked for AT and T, I worked for them for five years, and. Uh, in my fifth year, like I didn't want to be MCP forever. I actually wanted to be a uh, either a QA or HR manager at AT and T. But the thing that kind of um, was totally killing me was uh, in my last year there, I got a new supervisor. And I don't know how do you it's your job, Jen. Do you have like usually one person that oversees you, and then you have a manager that oversees everybody that oversees the yeah the, yeah like yeah also my but they're like super lax. Oh, they are. Yeah. See, like, that that's how it was at AT&T. Majority of the time, everyone that I had before this, uh, the last one, had been super lax also. It was like, okay, this is these are the numbers we need to hit. If you don't hit that number, we're going to have a discussion about why you didn't hit that number. And then I'm going to try my best to be understanding about it. And then, you know, we need you to hit that number. If you're in a dire situation, then we'll have a more serious conversation, you know? Um, but, like, this last supervisor I had had Wednesday meetings and none of us wanted to be at Wednesday meetings like we would prefer to be working on the phone than actually go to this meeting mm-hmm. because what she would do is she would call everybody into the into the, uh, the meeting room and then she would announce your your worst score that you had for that oh that's week. fucked up in front of everyone and then asked you why just fuck you and that's why you're, yeah you're on the spot so you're like I don't know and then she just mm, and then move on and if you don't have any bad scores then she would just say Okay, we'll see about next week. Fucking her tactic is just demoralize and that's it. Yeah, she demoralizes you to do better. Like, and that didn't work for me because I eventually said like, okay, I want to get cut on my hours because I want to focus on doing YouTube things. I want to work, but I want to work on something I enjoy working on and I don't enjoy this anymore. So um, she said uh, she cut my hours like I wanted, but then she went over to the, her, her manager, the one who was higher up. Now I'm friends with this guy. Mm-hmm. I, I've worked with like every one of my supervisors has been under him for the five years I worked there. But she went to him and said he has a second job. What? She came to him saying my YouTube was my second job because I said in a chat that it's my second job. Oh, no. it was a joke. I had used that phrasing. It's my second job because I was able to make money on YouTube. So she tells him he comes to me with the transcript and he's like, you have to quit YouTube because you're not allowed to have a second job. Oh, they think you're blue lighting. And the thing is, like, I was like saying, no, it's not. It's not actually a job. He goes, I know, but you signed a paper. It said that you can't do that. It's a hobby. Said, at that point. Yeah, he said, like, you said that it was. So you have to either pick up full time and quit that or quit here. So I was like, well, man, I've given you guys like I went I went to he- worked here the entire time I was going through college. And this is kind of crap and you know it's crap and he's like yeah i do know but it's just the policy now and it's like well we all know what's going on we know this is a bad situation but yeah okay i'm i'm out of here this is my two week notice right now then i'm gone if i can give you most of my life and this is how you treat me that's exactly it though dude like i was gearing up to become a uh become a manager in qa and it it just fell down to this it was horrible it was stupid but like that's what that's what it fell into. Fuck that. Fuck that. Your old supervisor, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I. That's why I'm actually really glad that I eventually did become MCP though, because that station where I was trying to gear up to be a manager at shut down. It. Yeah, it got shut down. Yep. Yeah, that happens. Like um. But was- yeah, like I, I was saying, is like I got uh wireless Bluetooth earbuds and like fucking work feels. 
great now. I'm just like constantly listening to podcasts. Like just being like, all right, got nothing to do. Gonna just gonna pop up pop up into the podcast and work on my work. Just, that's it for like the the ten hour shifts. So they last long enough to for me to get to my lunch break, and then during my lunch break I charge them, and they last till I am able to leave work. So I'm literally just constantly listening to things. That's awesome, dude. It's like oh, you listen to you listen to We Are Live. Who's that? Are you serious? You never heard of them? No, I don't. The only podcast I listen to are uh, the Best Friends podcast, which I've been super behind on. So I've been using it to catch up, and it's like I've listened to three podcasts because they're like usually like three hours, and um, the okay. Rooster Teeth podcast. That's it. See, like my thing is, I've always been into like storytelling stuff. So like. The We're Alive podcast is a zombie survival kind of thing, but it's a it's a radio drama, and it's got oh. like I think four seasons. It's it's finished now. You can actually listen to it beginning to end. Actually, 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 that sounds familiar. I think me and Blue actually might have watched that before. Is it like it's um, really good? Is it like a uh, part of it like takes place in a like rundown uh, like hotel or something like that? Or yeah, like... yeah. The whole first I think and half of the second season takes place like in that. Okay, I think I, I think I've actually listened to it then. Like a long time ago. I've, dude, mm. you got to hear it. The, and there was this other one I, I used to listen to called The Tobolowski Files. Tobolowski also Files. a really great. Yeah. It's, trust me, like it sounds weird, but it's it's uh, because the guy who's in it is uh, Stephen Tobolowski. Uh-huh. What does he do? He's, he's, he's an man. actor. He, he's an actor in Hollywood. Okay. Uh, you ever watch Groundhog's Day? Yes. I fucking love that. Remember movie. Ned Ryerson? Like the, the guy who eventually, uh, who sells insurance and eventually... Bill Murray punches him across the jaw. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the actor Stephen Tobolowsky. He, oh. He's in a lot of shit, but he always plays secondary characters. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah, he's he like, was in Lost. He was in Glee. He was in uh, is it uh, Heroes? He was, he always plays secondary characters, but he was in all of them. And he talks about like he essentially tells stories about his life. Oh, but he's, he's like really that. He's like that dude that's got and killed by every every um vil- uh, horror villain. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> he's I. I didn't say he played good roles. Okay, I said that he plays roles. He's he's been in movies. He's he's been in good shit. He's been in a lot of really good shit. He just never plays the lead character in this good shit. He's also been in a lot of bad shit. But like the uh, the things he talks about are like um, he he actually tells stories about. I think he he says life, love, and um, the entertainment industry, which he talks about being an actor. But he also talks about like. Oh yeah, this is this is how I coped with my girlfriend breaking up with me of eight years. Oh Jesus, it's a it's a really great podcast. Like honestly, when I was in college, I used to listen to them. They'd help me get through a lot of shit because it's like, how did you deal with this, Stephen? Tell me, tell me, father figure. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I need someone to tell me. <laughs> um, but I yeah, I never heard of it. I don't like I've never heard of that name till now. Now now I kind of recognize who that is. Um, I've heard good things about something called TED Talks. It's like a science show. I don't think I've seen that. That, that yeah. sounds pretty cool. A science podcast. Yeah, it's like they, they talk about like theories and shit. It, it, it's apparently super good. You mean Actually, like um, theoretical, like theoretical physics and such? Yes, yeah, stuff like that. And um, like stuff, um, I think it's like they explain how in, like industry works. Like, there's people from this industry, and they come on to his show to talk about how it works and how, like, they're the best in their industry. Holy shit, that actually sounds really interesting. Yeah, I, like, yeah I'm I, sure. To be honest, I didn't understand how, I, I have no clue how um, the science industry actually works. Like, how do scientists make money besides just government grant, you know? I don't actually because know. That's, I don't think they do. Yeah, that's something I would actually really be down to listen, like, learn about. Because I don't know about it. Like, you ever think about, like, when you're a kid or a kid says, like, I want to be a, a scientist when I grow up. I want to cure cancers. Like, that sounds like a fantastic thing to do. Although I have no idea how that practically works in the real world. Yeah. It's just like, who's going to give you the money? Yeah. Like, because obviously you can't just do that, you know, because of the love of it. <laughs> yeah, you can't just love your work. What are you? Huh? Huh? You think you're better than me? Loving your job? Fuck you, kid. You push the kid. <laughs> you, you push the kid in the dirt. Damn it. I feel like this is an appropriate time to bring up that clip of me losing. It. <laughs> you think you're better than me, kid, huh? <laughs> uh, you are. You guys are going to turn me into like a, a terrible person. This is just slowly <laughs> teaching me that I should have just I should have just seriously ground that kid's face into like the controller. <laughs> just knock it out of his hands and learn today, kid. 
<laughs> you kind of thought today. For some reason, a lot of our podcasts are about, hey, we're, we can fight a child. Look, okay, given an actual situation, would you fight a kid? If I had to, yes. If I yeah. want to, yes. New hypothetical question. This is my hy- hypothetical question then, Jen. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want to fight a kid. If you... <laughs> Wait, what? No. <laughs> yeah. That's the hypothetical so question yeah. is, did, if you are in a situation, okay, assuming that they're they're endless, okay, they are trying to kill you, and you cannot run away from them, uh-huh. okay? How many toddlers do you think that you could take on before they eventually overrun you? All of them. All of them? You wouldn't tire out. No, there's no such thing as tiring out from being toddlers. (laughs) (laughs) That's the most fucked up thing I've ever heard anybody say. Could you... uh, When when we make this... (laughs) Let's highlight that into a thing. I'd like that to be just word text that are from that point on. As soon as you that leaves your mouth, I want that to be on the screen. Quote general. <laughs> no, there's no such thing as tearing out from being toddlers. Live with that for the rest of the pod. You are living with that. It is. It is now appended to you and your name, Matt. If if <laughs> if you can make it the title of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Beat it That's so fucked up. Like I no. mean, and I even posed the question about what, how many toddlers you can take before you overrun. Well, I'm just like, what about you? How many toddlers can you beat before you get tired? I don't think. Okay, like practically speaking, it's one of those situations where like I wouldn't want to fight a toddler, but since they're they're trying to kill me, and I have no other situation to get away from this, probably take out like maybe like twenty before like fatigue starts to set in. It's like this is this this child beating bores me. I need to go. Not not, not like bores you because you can't run. Oh, so it it bores you and then they kill you. Yeah, it bores. I can only take so much child beating before I get to get bored. Hey, well, no, it's you'd get tired eventually. Your body would start to give out. You can't nah. just you can't exert physical activity consistently. It doesn't matter how strong you think you are at beating a toddler. <laughs> Look, it's like I'm just saying. How many toddlers can can take a, a grown man? I don't know actually. I'm pretty sure like if like if you, if you had like five toddlers, they could actually probably overrun one one person if he's tired and can't really. You think? Retaliate. You think we could? Uh, you, we can make that a video. We can go and find like a an orphanage, get a bunch of get a bunch of them, have them. How do you just it? get a bunch of them? You just gonna go in there? I would like to borrow at least twenty of your toddlers, please. Uh, I would like to see the finest, strongest child. I would like to train him to battle. <laughs> I, to mm. Take him out to fights and put bits on him. I'm pretty sure people get locked up for that. Uh, Hasn't that? Was it, oh wait, there was actually a news article I think I saw recently. Oh my god, I'm pretty sure there was a news article I saw recently about what? that. What? Was it really? There was a fight club for uh, yeah. It was a um, not nursery. Nursery is the wrong word. Uh, child care, Shh. where someone got locked up recently for um, for hosting a, a kids fight club. Ow. Living the dream. Hang on, I'm I'm gonna find this real quick. I'm pretty it's sure it's got to really? be in the news. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, da- New York. Okay. Uh, oh wait, no. I guess this is an old title. Daycare worker sent to prison. Yeah, this was end of last year. I guess so maybe I was, I was saw a screenshot of this. So a daycare worker apparently um, hosted a kids fight club. Huh? In uh, I'm trying to find out where where this was. Um, Sarah. She was a 31 year old woman. Uh huh. She was put in prison. This is uh, Virginia. She was uh, sentenced to three years in prison for her role in what prosecutors called Baby Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. It's not Sarah. Kara Spriggs, 26. Okay. okay, but how long How long did the Baby Fight Club go on for? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm right now... This is Washington Post, so this isn't some, like, onion thing. So this is an actual thing that happened. This is uh, posted in um, September 30th of last year. Um... It doesn't say how long it was running for. Um, yeah, no. Oh, wait, no, yeah. Sarah A. Jordan and uh, Kiera Spriggs. Um, so a 31-year-old woman and a 26-year-old woman. Um, she, oh, God. Engaged in several abuse facts, including encouraging kids to fight each other, feeding them flaming Hot Cheetos, stepping on their toes, and spraying them full force with a water hose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fucked up, but... No, I mean, like... It's That's, fucked up, but at the same time, how the fuck do you come up with that? Who, like, who thinks of this? Let me entice you, child. Cheetos and having them fight each other? 
how old were these kids again? It was, uh, let's see, I think they were two years old. Two years old. Jesus. So that's how you yeah. entice a two-year-old to fight? I, pfft. Uh, <laughs> they spray them with a water hose, stepped on their toes, and gave them flaming hot Cheetos and encouraged them to fight each other. You, frankly, I, to make a child fight, man, Matt's going to have to cut all this out. <laughs> to make a child fight, I just imagine. Wow. I imagine you just have to, like, push them towards each other and they'll start. Because, you know, kids are fucks. I, I don't know, man. I'm going to, speaking as a person who wants to have a kid, I would prefer that I could be able to raise my kid to, when pushed towards another child, given flaming hot Cheetos or not, his instinct would not be to throw a punch. His or her, their instinct, would not be to throw a punch at the child. Why? That's how I learned. Every day I, is Fight Club. Really? I, see, like, I grew up in a very non-violent home. Me too. I, mm. my, my dad was very much on the lines of like, look... We don't fight other people with our fists. We throw lawyers at them. <laughs> ah, yes. Let me just ruin their ah their I mean their uh, integrity. No, not integrity. Um, yeah. life. Their life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's one yeah. of those situations of like, hey, you threw a fist at me in the middle of Walmart, so we're taking you to court for legal fees, damages to my person, and mental scarring. So, hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And also the stuff I was going to buy that I couldn't buy. You're going to pick yeah, too. Yeah, that, that's part of the mental scarring, okay? I went there for a tub of, I can't believe it's not butter, and you made me believe it was butter. <laughs> mental scarring, I can never purchase that brand again because I associate it with a beatdown. And then, it's, then a couple weeks later, it's going to be cam, uh, Camded, Camded, cam, cam, did, Candid? Camded? Candid? Camded? Candid photos of you. Just Candid, okay. <laughs> candid photos of you, like, Leaving like like a like a, a a Walgreens with wearing glasses and a hood, and being like, well, it's the only way I could get my butter. And you're just leaving with the can't believe my butter, and they counter sue you, and they're like, it was all fake. We knew it the entire time. We were stalking you. What? <laughs> like, you're just like paparazzi that follows me. Yeah, they want they wanted to get the the, the photos. Be like, he, he's he doesn't he's not really scared of butter. I it's went weird. Yeah. Anyway, Spike, how was your week? Oh, it's pretty good. I bought a house. What? <laughs> I've, I've mentioned this in this podcast episode. It's no, we all... closed on the house. Oh, we, uh, oh, okay, wait. Actually, I do have a really interesting story about the house. Uh, mm -hmm. So, we closed on the house. Uh, when we were looking at the house, we were buying the house. There was a little colony, like I say colony, it's a little nest of wasps that was up near like this bay window that's on the second floor. And the bay window kind of juts out, so it has this little section of roof, and we could see wasps going underneath it and coming back out. It was like, that's not a big deal. We'll just call an exterminator. Um, so we closed on the house on um, Friday. Yes. Uh, on Thursday. And then on Friday, we, we uh, on, on Thursday, we decided we were going to go ahead and stay the night there. We did. It was wonderful. It feels really good owning my own home. And then um, on... Friday, we called up the exterminator to come out and deal with the uh, the wasps. He comes out and he finds out it's not wasps, it's bees. 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 Which, I mean, like, not that big of an issue. Honestly, bees are totally cooler than um, than wasps are. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, cool, but I need to get rid of them. And he's like, well, I can't spray for bees. It's illegal for me to kill bees. I, yeah. You have to call a beekeeper. So I called up the beekeeper. And, like, my initial thing is, like, you know... I think we're all aware of the bee, the bee crisis and everything like that. The bees are going extinct yeah. and everything. Um, so, I mean, that's one of the concerns I had was like, what do we need to do about the bees? Um, well, apparently the beekeeper said like, yes, uh, the bee crisis is a thing. But uh, if you have bees in your home, which, which puts you or anyone else into immediate danger, and it's not like a hive that's in your backyard that, like, that can be living uh, hive removal, then no, we just kill them. And I was like, well, huh. uh, what's the difference in price? Is like, well, if we go out and do the bee treatment, which is to kill them, it's about three hundred dollars. It's like, oh, good God, that's a, that's a pretty steep price. And they're like, yeah, if you want us to remove the the hive alive and take it in, uh, then that'll be about anywhere between eleven to fourteen hundred. What the fuck? And I was like, well, let's kill us some bees. And um, so the guy came out and he was. <laughs> He goes up there, he starts spraying the hive uh, with this little powder. He gave me like this bee beekeeper get up to wear, 
And he had one on as well because I was out there with him. He didn't want me to get stung. So he said, yeah, just put your hands inside the sleeves, hold them tight. And then uh, well, I'll go up there and, and spray the bees. So it has this little powder, essentially what it is. And it, it's a very humane way of killing the bees. And he puts, he powders the inside of the, the hive. And um, the uh, what first thing he notices is that roaches start coming out of the hive. <laughs> yeah, like these big, big ass tree roaches start coming out of the hive. Now, mind you, I've already had the exterminator spray the house and everything, so um, anybody who thinks I'm going to live in roach filth, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm, uh, as soon as the roaches came out, they had nowhere else to go, so the roaches actually either left the house or died in the, or died outside the house. So, uh, I'm actually, I, I, I hate roaches as well, and I'm not going to fucking live like that. So, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're dispersing, uh, or they're gone already. Um, but the way he says is like, he starts knocking on the roof and everything, and he says he could hear a lot of buzzing inside that roof uh, um, like so he comes down more? and explains this yeah he says like basically there's there is a full honeycomb hive of bees inside the roof and it needs to be removed so um the way he described it and this is this is one thing is that it was already sealed off so that means that somebody knew there was a beehive in there oh um, it was those, an old beehive yeah it those was an old fucks. beehive they probably paid to have somebody kill the bees the guy came in and sprayed the whole thing down for bees. Then he probably should have informed them that the beehive needs to be removed. If they didn't remove it, they just sealed it. Now, the beehive still had honey in it, so the roaches went after the honey. They ate their way through the seal and then stayed inside the beehive eating the honey. Ugh. Then when wasps found the holes, they started building wasp nests in there. Going in and out, they eventually started carrying um, a scent that the bees picked up on and found an old beehive. So the bees came in, they killed the wasps, and they started using the old hive. The roaches, however, don't leave because they can't get killed by bees. Their carapaces are too thick to be stung. So the bees just make honey for them and the roaches leave the bees alone because they're making them food. What the fuck? What, what, what kind of advanced society did your house make? Yeah, so I have or had at this point a um, hive of bees in my uh, in my roof that was filled with roaches. A hive um, filled with roaches that the bees were taking care of, so the roaches would leave them alone. They had a yeah, bartering system. The, it was it was wild, man. But like, we still have to get the actual hive itself extracted from the roof, and that's going to cost us another really pretty penny because we, we paid three hundred for the treatment. We have to pay another nine hundred for them to get removed, and uh, it's, it's just the worst headache. Dude. The wonders of home living, you know. Dude, that's fucking bullshit. You should absolutely sue those that old old nice couple that you met. I, that, that's what makes me upset is like I, I don't want to but at the same time y'all knew and they, you didn't do anything they, about it yeah they knew they didn't tell it. you they didn't say anything and apparently like they just try to hide it away that was their solution yeah I mean that was the thing it was like we, we got a really good deal on the house if they had told me about it so that I was prepared for this I Ooh. honestly would be like okay cool this is Oh wow, that's a big cost. But if that's what I need to make sure that the um, to make this sure this works, then all right, let's go. But didn't tell you. Nope. Didn't share anything with you. Didn't let you know that there's gonna be a huge cost to, to stop a bee society, a bee roach society from developing. Yeah. <clears throat> I. You know, fuck those guys. I don't know, man. Video game news. I actually have some video game news for you. There's video game news. There's video game news. Well, there's, okay, there's one big video game news that I know you're not super into, but even I'm not that into it, but it's pretty big. Um, so Doomfist got released on Overwatch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't even think they really kind of kind of led up to it at all. Like, there's been a big speculation. A lot of people have been guessing about it. And the, the big thing that a lot of people were, were saying was like, hey, it's going to be Terry Crews because Terry Crews is tweeting about it. He was saying he wanted to be Doomfist. He was saying all these other things. Like, everybody was really down with the idea of Doomfist being Terry Crews. Um, they released Doomfist, and it's not Terry Crews. Yeah, no. And apparently, like, Terry Crews was okay with it or something. That's what I, I kind of read. I don't really know. Yeah. I mean, like... In all honesty, I can see why they don't want to use a really prominent actor as that because then it starts to associate it with a much larger like kind of thing. Because like everybody knows, if, if Terry Crews had played Doomfist, we're not watching, we're not playing as Doomfist. We're playing as Terry Crews. Terry Crews, you know? yeah, yeah. And I think that's what they're trying to avoid, uh, with the exception of like Matthew Mercer. Uh, Matthew Mercer. I don't think that they really chose like a big name actor. And even still, Matthew Mercer is a big name voice actor. 
but not really too prominent on main screen like Terry Crews was. I mean, Matthew Mercer wasn't in like, you know, um, huge A-list films, you know. He was in a lot of um, well-known games and anime and cartoons and things like that, but he wasn't like Terry Crews is in The Expendables, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. He isn't an A-lister. He's an, uh, a star. He's a voice actor, which really yeah, shitty he, it's re- it's really shitty like the how they treat voice actors and then it's kind of it's kind of why they they like voice actors tend to have for games tend to have a lot of strikes because like they're not treated super well yeah uh that that's <clears throat> actually something that I, I completely i completely feel for um because i don't think there's even a uh really too much of a like union for people who work on game voices and things like that uh so a lot of the times we like people who work on game voices get shafted yeah <laughs> Like, you know, you get no royalty towards the actual project. So it's like, cool, I got paid $5,000 to be in Grand Theft Auto V. And then the game makes, however much it made, multi-millions, you know? And you, honestly, you kind of feel shafted because, like, you know, you put in the hours, you were there for the mocap, you did everything like like an actor would in a in a major A-list film, but you're you're paid one, one ten thousandth of a, of, a, uh, of a percentage of what they would get paid for that, you know? Yeah, and it's and like like the other ways they get shafted is like um who was it was it a uh, Resident Evil like or maybe a Silent Hill one of those where Konami like completely fucked them because like they did a remaster and they still used the old voice lines but they were like yeah that's a different game you're not to pay you again yeah yeah that was that was Konami with uh, Silent Hill two oh, Silent Hill two and three it was that was kind of really disgusting I think that that was majorly why Konami. Uh, started in its big decline of like, yes, we we do great games and we keep a man locked in the basement. Yep, <laughs> just leave him there forever. That's that that's that's the kind of like and like decline of companies that really kind of bugs me, man. Like, I hope that like some of the other companies I really enjoy games from don't have that kind of decline. No, like the Konami fall. Well, to be fair, it's also because you know, Konami was never ever good at business. They were just like, this is popular. We keep doing this thing. Oh, we should put all our money to pachinko machines, but keep our IPs. Dude, okay. I will say this: um, the uh, one thing that I will I've noticed whenever I'm in Las Vegas, and I might have said this on another podcast, but uh, all the machines, like all the really cool big machines, are made by Konami. Yeah, they are. It, it's and just, it's like it went I don't all know into gambling. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good market or not, because like obviously people are playing those nonstop with paying out significantly more money than they would pay for one video game, say. But it, it's one of those things about, like, you're making money at the cost of your soul as well, at the cost of your integrity. What do now, you... Now, when they know? fucked over Kojima, <laughs> not too long after that, they were like, here's a new Metal Gear game, Pachinko Machine, that continues, yeah, I... that continues the story that you have to be able to gamble your way through to. And if you fail once, you have to start from the beginning, so you can keep gambling. That's so garbage, right? Like, That's ah, so garbage. like they they hurt people who love Metal Gear. They fucking hurt the shit. And it, it was an intentional hurt. And they, it, it was, hey, we own this IP. Um, we're gonna do whatever we want with it. Uh, okay, thank you. Bye. And yeah. that was it. Okay. Um, one other thing, Evo. Oh, Evo's coming up, isn't it? Evo, Evo is coming up, and uh, apparently this is going to be the second year that Evo is broadcast on ESPN2. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 because last year they made like that a huge deal, and like fucking um, people who watch ESPN in general were like, what is this nerd crap on my sports channel? I want to watch Did they the really? event. Yeah, they were fucking... They were, there's a lot of people stupid about it for no reason. Wow. And it's dumb. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's really big. That's a really big thing. I think that sounds really cool that like we're like there's this recognition of like a an esports on ESPN. Like I think that would that's a really cool thing. I wouldn't think that people would get super pissy about that. It's just because it's not man- sporty. It's not manly. It's not, it's not cool, like, man. What do you, what do you, want, you just want to watch the game rerun off season again? What do you, yeah. what are you doing from? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to watch my st- my college football where I I don't know who these kids are or who, who's playing or what they're playing for. You know nothing you know. about college football, do you? <laughs> do you know anything about college football? I know something about. I know. I know. Um, like, like league football. Well then, there we go. 
Look here, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but like fucking, it's but people make a point a lot, especially like comic artists. They're like, there's not a huge difference between enjoying something like cosplay or watching someone play a fighting game and shit like compared to sports because like you're watching someone do that thing you're watching yeah, someone like, else play a game favorite that's what they're yeah. fucking football games are literally live let's plays like in in the basics of sense it's you're watching someone else play a game and you're also watch, watching it with fucking commentary that, wow you're actually kind of laying that out and i yeah yeah <laughs> fucking everything's just a let's play dude walk into my 30 part let's play <laughs> Everything's just a let's play. You go to church, let's Welcome play. Welcome to the podcast. Look. Huh. God, just a big let's play. Oh, dude, yeah. Sims. Fucking, exactly. See? You know where I'm going with this. No, I don't. I, I know you're making some kind of strange conspiracy theory that's saying, like, everything in its own self is nothing but just a higher game that's we're, that we're all being played in. Like, have you been reading my, my, my conspiracy blog? <laughs> your, <laughs> your side blog? Um, what the fuck were we talking about before we get into this? Oh, ESPN. Oh, we're talking about Evo. Evo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, I want to be here, and I want to be able to do the things. I'm going to catch, like, one of them, I think, because it's towards the weekend. I'm going to miss I'm gonna miss Friday and Saturday, but I think I'll catch whatever's on Sunday, which I think is, like, the big one. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do the Salty Bet stuff. And I, I, I hope so. I really want to. Money. So, if you guys don't know, um, Salty Bet stream, uh, does a restream of, um... Of the evo tournaments and you can bet fake money it's fake money it's not real gambling it's yeah. not it's not breaking any sort of us it, you don't have to pay for anything but you can gamble fake salty bucks on the players and it's fun as fuck because it gives you more investment onto the into the whatever's happening on the screen you know plus i mean like it's not just betting on them when they're fighting you you can bet on them doing other things i know there was another another uh, bet they were doing of if someone's going to cry or not yeah if the dude uh, always someone's going to be salty or not yeah it was that was actually a really fun thing like they they the actual streamers there they know how to have fun it's not just running this underground fake gambling ring one one of the funniest things that's um that happens constantly with um the betting is that they'll bet for how long do you think that it'll take before the ad ad ends? So Wait, what? How long do you think it'll take before the ad ends? Like uh, the intermission? Really? Yeah, the intermission before the before the before they come back from um, from break because they're like, all right, we're gonna take a quick moment, a quick advertisement break. We'll be back in like two minutes, and then two minutes will expire. So then Salty will open up like, all right, are we gonna get come back before the next five minutes? Or are we gonna come back before the uh, next five minutes or after the next five minutes? And then people just go insane betting. Always bet after. Always bet after. <laughs> Man, I've been missing out on the salty bet. Like literally, you could just bet on literally anything. I need to. I need to get into that. The uh, uh, one last thing though, because we're gonna we're running actually somewhat uh, a little bit longer than, than we wanted to. I think because I was hoping that we could. This would be a short episode again, since there's only the two of us. But we keep talking. Yeah. Um, one of the things is that Xbox uh, Xbox One has said that uh, now it, everything is going um, uh, everything is going full backwards compatible. Oh, that's fucking nuts. So you can just play whatever you want, whenever you want? Yeah. So everything on um, Xbox, I mean, I, I say full backwards compatible. I don't mean with the original Xbox. Uh, but oh. you can play all games from the Xbox 360. They, as of right now, they've released a list that becomes available as of the 12th, which is tomorrow for us right now. Um, but as of the 12th, they released this list, and they said that there's going to be hundreds more. They're just rolling them out as they come along. Wow, that's, that's fucking great. At least it'll, the next bone will finally have games to, you know, catalog. No, I mean, that's the thing is, like, it becomes so difficult to justify getting an Xbox One. Um, but now it feels almost like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with letting go of my 360 if I can get an Xbox One that does the exact same thing, plus whatever more else they're doing with the Xbox One. It feels like it's actually practical to get one now. Yeah, it's like you can actually play something on it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing is like there. Yeah, I, I had one before I got rid of it because what the hell? I I have a PC. I don't need this. What is what is this garbage? Um, there is something I wanted to talk, say before. Oh, right. Uh, Spike. Today was free Slurpee Day. Seven Eleven. Also, Seven Eleven. Winnie Schnitzel sell, is selling. Uh, hot dogs for 56 cents. What? 
also, Krispy Kreme is selling a dozen donuts for like 50 cents or something like that. Dude! I need... <clears throat> okay, I'm going. Hang on. Uh, thank you guys for listening to the Dungeon Runners podcast. Uh, I'm, I need to run out to Wiener Schnitzel real quick. Uh, what do we need to cover real quick? Uh, yeah, uh, the Dungeon Runners podcast. Uh, listen to us record every Tuesday at uh, twitch.tv slash Dungeon Runners. And follow the Dungeon Runners podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, and you're also able to download the Dungeon Runners podcast on um, Google Play and iTunes, which iTunes should be back up and working again, thank God. Yes. We're back. Also, you can send us questions at dungeonrunnerspodcasts at gmail.com. It will be yes. in the links on YouTube and in our about page. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and send us some hypotheticals, questions, or other. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, we're running out, so we need more. <laughs> go get some hot dogs. Dude, I'm down. I want some so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Goodbye.